Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 10 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable to execute on your creative ideas with ease in this awesome application. Today's video is a continuation from yesterday's video, and admittedly, that video was much longer than I wanted it to be, but in yesterday's video, we explored the different mouse tool options that you can change your mouse's cursor into to perform different tasks across your projects. The mouse tools can be viewed and selected from these two drop-down menus at the top of the tracks area, as well as the editor windows. When we click, we see all the different mouse tools available, and we can specify both a left-click tool as well as a command click tool. From here, you can flip between two different tools for your mouse just by holding the command key on your Mac's keyboard. So we're flipping between the scissors and the zoom tool. This can be really handy. For example, we could zoom in on this selection right here. And then when I let go of command, we can then split up this region using the scissor tool. But as I mentioned yesterday, it can be quite cumbersome to have to constantly go up to these menus at the top of a window every time you want to change your mouse's tool. Fortunately, Logic Pro provides a key command that will open the mouse tool menu right at the location of the mouse. If you press T on your Mac's keyboard, this will bring up the mouse tool menu. We can then select a different left click tool, as well as if you press T again and then hold command, you can select a different command click tool. All right, so now we can flip between the marquee tool and the glue tool. I'm gonna use key command, command Z to undo these edits I've made. And while all of these different mouse tools are great and can be useful in different situations, there honestly are even better and faster ways to work with your mouse in your projects. And that's what today's video is all about. Today, I wanna to get you set up with some Logic Pro settings that will be set globally across your projects. And also I wanna give you a couple of key commands, which honestly will replace the need to ever have to visit these mouse tool menus ever again. First, let's go up to Logic Pro in the top menu bar and click and go down to settings. And depending on what version of Logic Pro you're working with, this might say preferences instead, but either way, we're gonna open the general settings for Logic Pro. The Logic Pro settings window will pop up and there are different tabs for each of the different setting categories. And some of these settings provide subheadings that you can click through. Let's click on the editing tab under the general settings. And about halfway down, we have this option that says pointer tool in tracks provides. And there are three options we can enable or disable. And what they provide are the option to enable what we call click zones. It basically turns the pointer into a smarter tool. First, we have the option to enable or disable the fade tool click zone. Underneath, we have the marquee tool click zone. And third, we have the option to enable or disable the quick swipe and take editing click zone. This third option we're gonna leave disabled for now. But when we dig into take folders and comping takes in your projects later in the series, we'll revisit this setting. All right, before we even start to dig into these first two options, let's just move the setting window for now and bring our attention to the tracks area. Now, if we take a look at the pointer tool and we start to move the pointer tool around the tracks area, for the most part, the pointer tool is always the pointer tool. Of course, the pointer tool will adapt under certain circumstances, for example, in the upper half of the right boundary, we get the loop tool, which allows us to loop a region again and again for as long as you need it. And when you hover the pointer tool in the bottom half of the right boundary, we get this tool to be able to adjust the length of the region on the right-hand side. As well, if we go to the bottom half of the left-hand side, adjusting the length of the region from the left. And if you hover your mouse over the upper left-hand side, the pointer tool stays the pointer tool which allows you to make selections, move regions around, copy regions if you want to by holding option. But the point is, is just about all the time the pointer tool remains the pointer tool. It doesn't change into a completely different tool. That's where click zones come in. If we go back to these general settings under the editing tab, let's enable the options for fade tool click zone and the marquee tool click zone. And let's close these settings. Now already you can see that the mouse has changed from the pointer tool to the marquee tool. And depending on where we hover the pointer tool now, the pointer will change into different tools. Basically from here on out, the pointer tool is no longer a single tool. It's in fact, three tools in one. To start with, if you hover your mouse over the upper half of the track lane, 
So it doesn't have to be over a region. The pointer tool remains the pointer tool. So we can make a selection and drag a region if we need to. We can continue to loop a region. We just have to hover our mouse closer to the midway line on the right-hand side. We can adjust the boundary still. But now if we hover our mouse in the bottom half of a track lane, we get the marquee tool, which allows you to make edits like the scissors tool. If you double click, we've split this region into two using the marquee tool. You can make a selection with the marquee tool, either for playback, or we can split this section of the region completely from the other two just by hovering our mouse back in the upper half to regain the pointer tool and then click. And now we've separated that region from this one. And the marquee tool is not specific to a region. We can make a selection with it in an empty section or just by clicking once. And lastly, when you hover your mouse in the upper left and right hand corners of an audio region, the pointer tool transforms once again into the fade tool which is really handy because anytime you edit an audio region, it's always best practice to add a fade out and a fade in to ensure that your edits are clean and seamless, smoothly transitioning from silence to sound and from sound back to silence. So if we move the playhead right back here, we can take a listen. If we split these regions using the marquee tool, again, hovering our mouse in the bottom half, let's split it up. You can also add a crossfade across audio regions by clicking on the boundary and then dragging across the two regions with the fade tool. Check it out. If we take a listen. And lastly, you can adjust the curve of a fade by hovering your mouse closer to the midway point of a fade, this will bring up a new tool that will allow you to adjust the curve of the cross fade, as well as adjust the curve of the fade in and fade out. Right? Let's go to the fade out so we can see that as well. All right, from this point on, with click zones enabled, we basically have four tools at our disposal at any given point wherever the mouse is. We get the pointer tool, we get the marquee tool and the fade tool. And then you can set a separate command click tool. So if we go down to maybe the gain tool and I'll hold command to select it. And now we have the pointer tool, marquee, fade, as well as the gain tool. So much faster, so much easier. But of course this doesn't account for all the other mouse tools. So now I wanna give you a series of key commands that I really think you should write down and this will make your life a lot faster and easier. Number one, the pencil tool, which allowed you to create new regions and events and import audio. Well, when it comes to software instrument tracks, all you have to do is right click or hold control and click. A drop down menu pops up and allows you to select between creating a new MIDI region or pattern region, which we'll dig into later on in the series. All right, so we can create a new MIDI region, open the editor, and now start to plug in notes with our pencil tool, which is its own command click tool. Importing audio is as simple as can be. If we navigate to the finder, go to my desktop, we can bring an audio file right into the project just by clicking, holding, and dragging from the finder into our project. Awesome. Next up, the eraser tool, which is also very simple. All you do is, is you make a selection and you press delete on your Mac's keyboard to remove that selection. So simple. Next, the text tool, which allows you to rename regions in your projects. Well, it's not as elegant, but honestly, you can just select a region, right click or hold control and click, and then go down to name and color. And then you can rename this region. And there's even a key command, shift and N. So let's do that right now, shift and N. All right, so we can change this to electric X. Let's replace the scissors tool now. And if you remember the scissors tool, it had a pretty handy feature that allows you to split up a region into equal segments based on where you split it. We'll check it out. I'm gonna move this audio region to the beginning, get rid of these guys, 
I'm going to stretch this out and bring it back to its original length. And let's just click L to loop. And let's start to zoom in. And as I hold command and press the right arrow key to zoom in, we're bringing up my command click tool, the gain tool. Okay, now if we hover our mouse in the bottom half of a region, this brings up the marquee tool. Let's get real close so we can really see this. If you hold shift and option while double clicking on a region with the marquee tool, let's zoom out. And now we've split the original region before the loop into four equal segments. Right, so let's undo, let's zoom in, get real close, and we'll do it again. Marquee tool, hold shift option, double click, and look at that. We've split up the selection before the loop point into equal sections, each a beat in length. So right there, you don't even need the scissors tool anymore if you don't wanna use it. Next, there's the glue tool, which honestly, if you just select software instrument regions and click the key command J on your Mac's keyboard, this will join software instrument regions together. And for audio regions, let's just get rid of this loop. Select all of these regions and press J. Once again, these are non-contiguous audio regions. So Logic will have to generate a new audio file and we can click create. Logic will bounce it and there's our bounce. To avoid the solo tool, make a selection and press the key command control S to solo just that selection. You can also unsolo your soloed regions using the same key command, control S, and solo multiple regions as well. All right, we're in a solo state, but we've soloed both regions in this project. Let's solo this one and take a listen. To skip the mute tool, let's make a selection and press control M on our Max keyboard to mute that selection and press control M again to unmute. The zoom tool is always available to you by holding control and option on your Mac's keyboard to bring it up. And then click, hold, and drag across the area that you want to zoom in on. And then when you want to zoom back out, hold control and option and just click. If we open up the show hide automation, the automation select tool already was kind of not necessary because you can click with the pointer tool to draw automation. and select different automation points to adjust them with the pointer tool as well. And you can also select different nodes of automation either by clicking on them and dragging over, over multiple nodes. We've now selected these three automation points. And now we're adjusting all three points at the same time. And if you want to adjust the curve of any automation, Just hold control and shift with your mouse over the line of automation that you want to adjust the curve of, and then click and hold while holding these two keys to adjust that curve. So as you can see, we're adjusting the ramp of this part. Check it out. Then there's the flex tool, which really doesn't have a good secondary option. But I personally prefer to show flex mode in the tracks area and then turn on flex for my track so I can see all the different transient markers for the audio in this region. So then if we hover our mouse in the bottom half, we can create three flex markers and then make an adjustment to the performance to just this one note. And lastly, the gain tool, which honestly makes for a really good command click tool. So if you hold command, this will bring up the gain tool. So now you can adjust the level of audio regions and velocity of MIDI regions on a per region basis. All right, that's enough about the mouse tools. Thanks so much for watching. See you for more tomorrow in this newbie to ninja series here on Wide Logic Per Rules. Take care.